Well, thank you everybody for, for coming. Calories Don't Matter is really all about um, talking about meal combinations. I'm Joanna Hodorowska. My company is Nutrition in Motion, and basically I help you perform better by changing what you're eating, but helping you actually understand why these combinations may work better than others and help you get in tune with what works with or works for you. You know, because everybody's body is a little bit different, so there's not one kind of plan that's going to work for everybody. But there's some general rules that most people can do, and then there's other parts where it just has to be customized to you. So that's most of the, what I do is I do one-on-one -on -one work with athletes as well as non-athletes to help you perform at your best, um, so that you age yourself younger and um, avoid the yeah. You don't get older and slower. You're just not eating the right way for your body. That's it. So. Being very kind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always kind. You know, for me, it's the non-judgmental zone all the time, and I'm not here to, to criticize anybody. Um, and even when I get the food logs from from clients that that, that come in. I do need to see two to four days of food logs because I have to see what you're actually doing. Otherwise, I'm guessing. And you, you know, you'd never go to the doctor and say, fix me. He asks a bunch of questions to get an idea of what's, what's going on. But people do come to me and ask me to fix them. But I need the food logs to get a better idea of what are the habits, what are you doing, when are you, doing, when are you eating, what combinations are you eating, because all those things matter more than just how many calories you're eating. And I was talking to a friend of mine um, on the way over here, and he's like, well, doesn't it all just kind of balance out at the end of the day if, if you ate the right amount of calories and you exercise the right amount? No, it doesn't. Because if you save all the calories for the evening, then you're gonna be more built like a sumo wrestler because that's actually how they eat. They don't eat all day. They exercise two to four hours a day, but they actually eat only once and like 6,000 calories all in one day. Just so that they can be that that size and have that strength. I don't think any of you guys want to be a um, sumo wrestler. Running would be really hard if you had that much weight on you, right? It would. So, so what I'm going to be talking about today is more about the, the meal combinations because that's really more important than counting calories. Counting calories, every, every client that I've had that um, I had one that actually started, the office started doing Weight Watchers, so he jumped on, on the bandwagon to do Weight Watchers, and then his food logs changed from what we had talked about and what he was doing for the last two to three weeks to he's just counting points, and it went worse than what he had come in to see me for. But he was in the points range. So, you know, this kind of falls into that category of it's not about the calories, because 100 calories of and since half of you are drinking beer, I'm just gonna say 100 calories of beer is not the same as 100 oh, calories of broccoli. Awesome. You know, it's going to affect your body in a completely different way. Yeah. Plus, she's gonna tell us how to make this okay. Oh, okay. Right, so you can have add some protein, add some fat, and add some, add some, add some grapes. That's, that's pretty much it, I, I don't know. Um, so, but that is really what, it, what it's all about. It's not about, uh, you know, excluding food groups just because, uh, you know, it's the latest fad. It's not about putting you on the paleo diet because if you're looking at a paleolithic diet, you have to look at everybody's ancestry and where you came from. So some people are going to do better on, obviously, their own native foods than they are on foods that they're, they're, they might be consuming now. So if you're coming from Eastern Europe, uh, typically coconut oil is not going to be something that you want to include as one of your healthy fats. It's probably going to disagree with you. What is that? Coconut oil. Oh, okay. So it's a, it's a very popular item. You know, it's healthy. It's got all these medium chain triglycerides. It helps the body to metabolize fat better, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, most people that I've worked with, including myself, coming from Northern Europe, can't do coconut oil. It's just not in your genetics. So it's not going to work right. So in terms of, uh, and if anybody has any questions, go ahead and ask them while you have them. You don't have to wait till I'm done because you want an answer when you have the question and by the time I'm done, you'll forget. Okay. That's usually how it works. So in terms of, um, uh, I'll, I'll use your, your beer as an example because you know that is typically considered what? Is it a carbohydrate? Is it a, a vegetable? Is it a um, protein? Is it a fat? Where, where would you put it? 
a tasty beverage. It's a tasty beverage. Okay, so, but, what, but what is it? Is it a carbohydrate? Okay, so it's a carbohydrate. So when you're looking at balancing the, the what's on your plate, and I'm going to refer to a plate, but it's not the government plate. It's my it's my plate. And um, so you're going to take, you're going to, basically the liquid is still, you're not going to pour it on your plate, but it's considered, it's still considered a carbohydrate. So on your plate, you ideally want to have half of that plate to be actually green vegetables. Green. So those are the low calorie, but high nutrient dense. They've got the calcium and magnesium in it. That's going to help you to, to relax the muscles. So if you, if you suffer from having um, cramps after running, that's actually uh, a big part of it, that you're not getting enough magnesium so the muscles aren't actually relaxing. Uh, so half your plate is going to be, you want them to be greens, and then you kind of cut the rest of it into, into thirds, and then one pie is carbohydrates, one pie is um, fat, and the other pie is protein. So that's generally how you want to approach your plate, but, and then you want to approach that plate the whole day. So if you're going to be consuming beer, that means you want more of the greens and more protein, but now you're not going to add another carbohydrate on there because you're already getting the carbohydrate in the liquid form. Does that make sense? So, you know, ideally there's probably a million ways you could do it better, but that's just going to be the simple, simple way. Okay. So if you're going to consume that beer, keep in mind that if you're trying to lose body fat and you're trying to get your body into a fat burning mode, it's not about just running at that fat burning heart rate. It's really is my body actually utilizing my 80,000 grams of fat stores that I have, or is it utilizing the 2,000 um, grams of carbohydrates that are stored in my as muscle glycogen? So most of the time, athletes are used, are doing a lot of carb loading, eating a lot of carbs that spikes the blood sugar that that does increase your um, your muscle glycogen. But again, you only have 2,000 grams of that, where you have access to 80,000 in terms of energy in fat stores. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you're a big person or a small person, you still all have 80,000 grams of fat stores. So we want to get the body to to start using those so that we don't have to um, burn as many of the, the glycogen stores and then continue to eat carbohydrates and then eat more of those per hour and then we get GI distress the more, the more that we're training because the stomach can't process that much in terms of carbohydrates per hour. If you're having a trouble with losing weight, it's probably because you're eating too many carbs in combination to the, the, the proteins, the fats, and the, and the greens. So, and he agrees. He's, he says the same thing. Like, see, I told you so. Mm -hmm. Oh, all gone. All gone. I got it. <laughs> Sorry. 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 So that that'll throw anybody off, right? In their, in the midst of what they were talking about. So, do you have a question? Okay, you look like you might have had. So the, the whole idea is to try to get the body into that fat burning mode even when you're sitting down. And it's, and it's it, it, irrespective of whether you're exercising or not. I do, uh, I'm actually a metabolic efficiency uh, training specialist. So what I do is customize those plans to help your body to actually burn that fat. And it's more about looking at the meal combinations and not looking at the calories because the calories aren't really um, that necessary to look at. You just get fixated on calories and you're not really paying attention to to what the quality of the combinations are. Just like I said with the with people counting points and Weight Watchers, that's you know looking at that 100 calorie snack pack as well it's only one point so I'm fine but when you're looking at it from well what is it what's a calendar calorie snack pack it's typically all carbohydrates well how, what's that going to do to balancing my blood sugar and getting my body to burn fat it's going to do nothing to that. it's going to spike your blood sugar you're going to be hungry a couple hours later probably starving and then you're going to crave the same kind of thing something sweet something carby and then um it just keeps going on that cycle. So it doesn't help you to, to burn those fat stores, it actually helps you to create more fat stores and get them to stay there. So if you're trying to get leaner so that you improve your performance, you've got to look at the nutrition part and stop counting the calories and actually look at the, at the meal combinations because that's where it's gonna 
going to be the biggest benefit. And once you get into that fat burning mode, the more you run, your calories actually don't change per day because you are actually starving half the day. You, you end up eating as much as you need in whatever meal and then you get to eat three to four hours later as you're supposed to. The more you, um, the more you train, you don't actually end up eating that much more. If you're voracious the two days after, well, you just did a marathon, right? So a couple days after, I'm, I'm gonna pick on, I'm gonna pick on you. I'm sorry, Terry, I'm gonna pick on you. But for the, for the two days after the marathon, how hungry were you? Immediately that day, not at all. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. The next couple of days after yeah. that, it, it worked its way up. Yeah. Yeah. So, so typically, if if you do longer events like that or um, higher intensity, you don't necessarily need to be eating everything under the sun, everything in the in the house, the next two, three days afterwards. And I know for when, when I was doing triathlons, yeah, after after those those, you know, hundred mile rides on the weekend, Monday, Tuesday, I could just eat anything and everything and I fought my weight day in, day out. And it was just a really a, a huge challenge. Now, you know, I've increased the fat, decreased the carbs, eat way more vegetables than I ever have, and I'm still fitting into the same clothes that, well, I don't have all the same clothes that I had 25 years ago, but I do fit into clothes that I still have from 25 years ago. How many times per day you recommend to eat? Typically, it's every three to four hours. So for most people, it's five, it's, most people, it's five, five times a day. I have some clients that, depending on how their, their sleep schedule is, because they're not really eating the, the, the optimal way yet, they're sleeping an hour or two longer than they really need to. So, so. Well, if you don't eat, right, we'd actually do Well, you don't have to sleep. Yeah, I said sleep. I, I, there's, 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 no, there's, there's a, yeah. Typically, it's you know depending on the individual, it's anywhere from seven to nine hours. But there's some Who's people. Who's here can sleep eight hours? Five. You know, but, but the goal is yeah. But but most people, the goal to actually be at at your best health, you do want to get seven at least seven hours. Oh, I know hours. you do want to get that. Right, but I have. People are sleeping too much. I do have some clients that come to see me that they're tired, and that's part of the issue is that they're eating the wrong combinations and it's making them tired. Yeah. So I'm not saying that, that oh. you're one of them, but no, no, I'm just no, saying that no. there are people like that. I've been just doing they a lot do of research actually... on sleep and women, and, and yeah. women, like, don't three get nights out of the week don't get, like, it's not like from major insomnia, so that's why I was like, who's this population that's sleeping too much? Yeah, well... I see. I see all. Usually, like I said earlier, people come to me when they need something fixed. So if they're tired all the time, they're coming to see me because they don't want to be tired all the time. And most of those people are typically overweight too because they're eating late at night and they're not eating in the morning and they're eating mostly carbs because they're tired. So then they're eating those carbs to get that quick energy, but then they're dead two hours later and then they feed again. So it's trying to re reshape those meals and reshape the timing of those meals and they might start to burn that fast. And it's not about looking at the calories at all, but looking more at the, at the quality of the calories and what the combination of the calories are. So you said, um, you know, maybe eat like five times a day, but quite honestly, like I, I don't feel hunger. Like, I don't know why, but for example, like I, like today, I'll give you an example. It's a smaller meal. Today, I got up, I had a cup of coffee, and it was probably, and that was like at 7.30. Okay. It was probably two hours before I felt like I needed to catch up. I even, so I had a full of meal. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, and I didn't eat, so that would have been around 9.30 10. And I had lunch at 1.30, which was leftover from last night. And oh, I've been so you're doing it right. That's actually what I do with a lot of clients. Yeah, and it was actually, it was my dinner, it was dinner leftover. I've, I've been trying to eat more <coughs> in the afternoon and less at night. 
So I had like a piece of fish, and I had this combination of potato cabbage and um, roasted potato cabbage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but are you doing meat? Um, and an orange. Oh, great. And now I'm here, you know, I'm here, I've been just for miles. I've had like half a beer so far. I'm not super hungry. Right. But I mean, I haven't, I've only eaten twice today, I guess. But if you but if you had eaten earlier at, at seven thirty, then you probably would have had your second meal at eleven. Oh yeah, and then you probably would have been hungry again at, at two and three. You know, so it really depends on when you had that first meal. And, and although generally speaking, you should be eating your first meal within an hour to an hour and a half after getting up. People are different. Some people can't have anything for two hours. So then you're you basically start your time clock from that first meal. So wherever that first meal is, you kind of you eat enough and with the right combination, and then you're typically going to eat three or four hours later. You eat enough, and so if you're staying up till eleven, then you might actually eat something again at eight or nine and a snack just to kind of carry you through. So it's really individual, but um, it's trying to make those optimal choices as well. Yeah. And some days you're just not going to be as hungry. Um, maybe it, it depends on what happened you did yesterday or you know, the calmness of, of the rest of the week. So, so, what would be a good, like, all of us train for long runs? You know, like one day a week. Like, we're all training for, like, long runs. Yeah. So, yeah, I always feel like if I'm going to run at 7 in the morning, I feel like I need to eat between 5 and 5 30. Typically, you want to eat two hours beforehand if you yeah. go running in the morning. If you go first thing, if let's say you woke up at 6.30 and then ran at 7, you probably don't need any. But if you're, if you're diet is predominantly carbohydrates, you're probably going to have enough energy for about 45 minutes and then you're starting to really go flat, so to speak. Or you'll need to take a gel or a sports drink or, you know, a couple of dates or um, something else. What would be a good breakfast for a person that is going to say run 10 miles on a Saturday? If you're eating breakfast earlier on? Yeah. So, like, what this, this is something. So, there isn't anything standard because everybody can eat different things. So, it's really trying to start paying attention to, you know, even if you ran in the afternoon, in the evening, well, what did you eat at 3 to be able to? Well, it's, it's, you might actually want that same kind of meal because one of my clients, that's what she determined is she felt best when she had a turkey thigh, collard greens, and a sweet potato. So that's what she would have in the morning. Because you can eat anything at any time of day. So that was her combination. I've got other clients that they'll do, they'll do, you know, half a bagel and put some peanut butter on it and, and they're good to go. You know, others will do the okay like green fat and add an egg and add protein and the whole lot of the fat in the yolk um, as well that slows down the absorption of the So if there really isn't one ideal thing, for me, I love potatoes. So in the morning, I'll have potatoes, but I'll have, I'll have an egg. Most people can do an egg. Because it's not just a digestive yeah. morning. Yeah. So it's really, it's really, you have to play around with what, what's ideally right for you. But it's trying to get some of those carbohydrates, but not just carbohydrates. Add some fat and add some protein. Okay. Does that make sense? So that's that's a good place to start. So with your oatmeal, adding an egg, the whole egg might be a good option, and it might mean that because now you're adding the egg, you're going to have a little less. Instead of having a cup of oatmeal, maybe it'll only be three quarters of a Does that make sense? So it's just kind of looking at it a little bit differently, and we're not looking at the calories, but we're looking at well, what are we doing to slow down the 
that sugar. And then we're going to look back at, you know, just the beforehand too, because what you do to the patients ahead of time before that run is also going to hold you to work that work that's not important in that morning run. Does that make sense? Two, three days. Two, three days, yeah. yeah. And if you have, if, if you carb run, you flip your switch right into, into sugar burns. So a lot of people, you know, don't do as well carb loading because they wonder why. It's because they change the diet, bam, they're into, into sugar burning, burning mode, and they're not in that fat burning mode. Does that make sense? Like the night before race is really not good. No. Which typically, which, which, which has only been challenged to carb load for what, the last of years? You know, so it's it's changing the, the, the thought pattern and experimenting with other combinations, and that's what I help you do when I'm working with clients. It's, it's really helping you make those those different combinations and trying to see what works best for you. Because it's not one it's not one meal works for everybody. You know, it's working with what what kinds of foods you already have now, and let's add this now and change it this way. Okay, let and all I'm doing is helping you start paying attention to how does my body how do react to the foods that I'm eating? How is it reacting to the combinations? If we change it just a little bit here, what's going to happen? I'd like to change the combination, but I dislike shopping. I dislike cooking. So you need a chef. <laughs> you need a chef. <laughs> well, so, so I do. So 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 I'm cooking, oh, I'm cooking for easy, and I know I need to make changes. But if it's not easy enough, I, I'm going to make it. Yeah, so when when I work with clients, I have clients that are just like that, you know. If you can cook twice a week, that's all that's that's all you really need. A minimum of two times a week. If you want quick recipes, I am all about quick recipes. Everything that I share with you, you can from start to finish in half an hour. And and I've altered them all because to make them easy because you know, you go to look at gourmet magazine or food and wine and you get these, you know, elaborate recipes, you're like, Oh, that sounds so good. Oh my God, I'm going to be like cleaning for three hours, let alone being in the kitchen for three hours trying to put all these combinations. So I've taken shortcuts on all of them because I'm like, I don't want to be in the kitchen all day. I don't have time to be in the kitchen all day. Maybe if there's anybody here. Oh, and then, and then I needed to be kid friends. Well, that, that's. That's a little bit more challenging, but you know, you can look around that too. It's hard to take everything to work. I take my breakfast already, my, my coffee, yeah. my breakfast. And but it's also, you know, how do you, how do you order the meals when you go out? Because the, you, I have to be very picky. Well, you have to be very picky. You, have, you know, it's, it's almost like, remember Burger King's commercial was, you know, Special orders don't upset us. Well, it, you know, special orders doesn't upset anybody anymore. You know, special orders are kind of the, the norm. So every time I go to a restaurant, you know, I have certain food restrictions, but I can ask for things a certain way, and I get it that way. And if it doesn't come that way, and then I say it didn't come the way I asked for. That's the only time I feel like I get my extra vegetables. Yeah. But then, so when you go to the restaurant and you order it the way you know you want it or whatever, order more so you have leftovers for tomorrow. You know, so you you save yourself one 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 time cooking. You know, and these are some of the some of the things that I do when I work with clients because there's not just a simple way for everything. You know, you've got to be able to work with with the, the parameters and give you some options that are going to be easier for you to cook and a way to cook more in one meal so you have more of some of those leftovers for later in the week. That's where the freezer comes in handy. But it's it's learning how to put those pieces together so it works for you. You know? Thank you. I end up throwing a lot of food away. So right now, I'm experimenting with meal flips. So I've tried Blue Apron for two weeks. I'm now, the next one is Hello Fresh. Right. And the third one is one that my daughter in law uses out in California. It's a little more pricey, but it has a better selection. And that's called Sunfish. Okay. So, um, so those are, you just get whatever it is that you need to make a meal for two people. So I say, you know, I yeah, you make it, you make it and have one meal. And I have one meal. And, yeah. and, that, and that's where we like right, a Right, right. Like, 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 like a salad. But, but doing something like that at least will give you some, 
um, some ideas, and then you can start making them on your on your own. Yeah, you know, the it's, it's really it's really helping you kind of carve out the time during the week. So that you can, and I do meal planning so that you actually go over your schedule for one week and say, okay, where can you? Pardon me? Yeah, so you can actually create what the meals where you need it and know how to plan because planning is half the problem. And if you can't plan right, you're basically planning to fail, right? Or you're failing because you're pla failing to plan. So, you know, even the best way without plan is if you don't actually do something with them, then they're not going to work. If you're going places and there's your schedule is really hectic and you didn't take any food with you, you basically kind of not put in the meal plan combinations together the next time you eat, you're just going to eat anything and everything. So it's trying to help you manage the day better and know when to go grocery shopping, what to go grocery shopping for, how to kind of look at it in a different way so that it works for your schedule and your life. Make sense? Look at it in a different way. Yeah, it's just looking at it in a different way. So I mean, that, that's generally what I do is help you kind of create those meals the way it has to optimize your body into burning the fat stores that it already has and optimizing your, your health and optimizing your, your stamina and your endurance. And that program is called the Metabolic Efficiency Program. So if you have any questions about that, you can just call me. I do have handouts. And if you want to schedule a 15-minute session with me, there's two ways you can do it. You can go to my website, www.nutritionemotion.net. There's a little click, click here for 15 minutes free. Or you just text NIM for Nutrition and Motion 15 to 444-999. Four, 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 nine, nine, nine. That's on here. Um, I think I forgot to put it on there. So, yes.